Hi, I'm Dr. Ronald Wheeler. I'm medical director for High Food Centers of America. Today we're going to have a lesson in prostate anatomy. Uh, prostate anatomy is important for you people to understand as we talk about a gland that is hidden. Uh, the prostate is a lubricating gland that's used during our fertility years. Uh, it nutrients the sperm that enable fertility uh, to be enhanced. Given all of that, much like the uterus with women, becoming a problem later on after their fertility years, the prostate is really such an organ for men as well. So we know as an example that prostate disease is the most prolific disease that men face. Prostate disease comes in three flavors, if you will, or three types. Uh, it comes in prostatitis, which is inflammation of the prostate. 95 or 98 percent, in my opinion, of all cases of prostatitis do not involve bacteria. If, the, if it does not involve bacteria, there's no reason for you to be on antibiotics if a doctor suspects you have prostatitis. The second uh, issue would be BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia. It could also be called enlarged prostate or uh, prostate, uh, uh, you know, significant size of the prostate, uh, uh, whatever we want to say, but it's an enlarged prostate. So people talk about it using different descriptive terms. Uh, beyond that, we have prostate cancer. So we sh as we talk about the anatomy, what we want to do is understand that the organ is often compared to a walnut. And a walnut probably would be something about that size. And I can't argue that it might in fact be more like a walnut, but it also has some length to it. So it's longer usually than it is high, and it's longer than it is wide. So if we take a look at the prostate, this, uh, uh, this, uh, message board here, uh, cartoonish looking uh, example here, allows us to look at the prostate. So this is the prostate in a side view. So I mentioned to you that it's longer than it is wide. So the bladder would actually be back here. The bladder would be here and would attach here. Urine would run down this tube and out this tube here. And as it runs out the tube, it would be controlled here by your sphincter which is a muscle that's able to shut off your stream at any point in time. When we ask people to do Kegel exercises, as an example, we want them to shut off their urine. By shutting off the urine, they're showing us that they can control their sphincter, which is a muscle. So as we look at this, this almost looks like a porpoise nose here. This is the apex of the prostate here, mid portion of the prostate here, base of the prostate here. The rectal wall would be here, down here. So as we look at this, and you took a look at this and said, okay, if I made a cut through this, what would it look like? Well, that cut would look like this image right here. So this would be the left side, because remember in imaging, as you look at an image, it's always the mirror uh, image of what you saw, so it's opposite of what you would think. So your visual right would be actually the actual left. So this is left, this is right, this is anterior. So your pubic bone would be up here, your rectal wall would be down here. So as we look at this, this is divided into colors and it's divided into colors for ease of reference. And so with this kind of a reference chart, if you will, for, for a better understanding of the prostate, we have three different colors or four different colors that we show. Yellow is the purple zone, red is the central zone, Blue is the transitional zone, and green, or this light, uh, uh, almost an aqua green, is uh, more like, uh, it would be the uh, fibromuscular stroma, which uh, does not have any cells of the prostate uh, within it. So when we take a look at this, the reason this is important is, when we do a digital rectal exam at the time of evaluation of any man that has an elevating or elevated uh, PSA, I'm interested in what I feel. So if the rectal wall is right here as an example, I'm gonna get a chance to feel this yellow zone. The yellow zone is called the peripheral zone. The peripheral zone is where 70 to 80% of prostate cancers live. In the red zone or central zone, and you can see central here, and within the central zone lives 20 to 30% of all prostate cancers. 
So it's not uncommon as an example with a man that has BPH or benign prostatic hyperplasia or an enlarged prostate to have a transurethral resection of the prostate. This is much like we would take an apple and take the core out of the apple with, an, with a very fine and defined instrument that will allow us to do that. As, as it cuts the tissue, it'll coagulate the tissue. The unit that I presently utilize and the one that I think is best of all uh, gadgets that we have is called a plasma gyrus. This is a gadget, if you will, that's made by Olympus and it is really state of the art and it has been state of the art uh, for a number of years. So given that, when we have a large prostate, we're gonna cut this out, this tissue, and core the prostate like we would core an apple. Where I was going with that point is, sometimes we're able to find cancer in that tissue. Well, that shouldn't be a surprise because we know that 20 to 30% of cancers live in that central zone. So again, this is the central zone here, and you can see the blue area here surrounding the urethra, which is brown here, represented as brown, and a little black dark hole in the middle, which is the opening to the, uh, from the bladder to the outside and through the prostate itself as an organ. So again, as we look at this, you can almost see that the yellowed area or the peripheral zone is almost like a chalupa, wrapping the rest of the prostate uh, within it, or a taco shell, something along those lines. You wanna be thinking about that and this is really what it is. It's really like a U. And uh, so as you look at that, that's a good way to be thinking about it. And again, it wraps around the remainder of the prostate. So when we feel something on digital rectal exam, and you know my affinity or interest in MP MRI, multiparametric MRI, if I feel anything on the digital rectal exam, and this has never ever been reported before because urologists generally have no interest in a multiparametric MRI. So bottom line is, is that if I feel something on the prostate, I will find it on the MP MRI. And this is important to note, it's important for you to understand, it's also further validation that if we feel something, it likely will be something of significance and something that you wanna pay attention to get a, multi, uh, a second opinion on it as an example. Your choice again, when it comes to biopsy versus MP MRI, both are equally diagnostic for prostate cancer. United Healthcare in January of 2015 have stated unequivocally that an MP MRI done with a three Tesla magnet is equivalent to a biopsy. For those individuals that have prostate enlargement and the PSA is rising, doctors want to be doing things like uh, biopsies on you randomly, that's like playing uh, pin the tail on the donkey. So it's pretty impossible for them to find cancer. The larger the prostate, the more difficult it will be. So if I were in the shoes of anyone watching this video, I would want to get an MP MRI with a 3T magnet to tell me about my prostate. So that's what I would want for you to do as well as we go forward in all that we do and say about the prostate. So again, to review, the, the yellow zone is the zone that we feel, that's the peripheral zone of the prostate. The red zone where 20 to 30% of cancers live uh, is uh, associated with 20 to 30% as mentioned and uh, peripheral zone 70 to 80. The transition zone is the part of the prostate that grows beginning when men reach 40 years of age or after. And some, it varies from patient to patient. It varies uh, based on testosterone level, we feel. Uh, we believe that that is the root cause of, uh, of that development. We also look at uh, family history and things like that, that genetics may play a role as well. So we don't know with certainty what's going on uh, about the growth part of that, but we do believe, again, it's hormonally driven. Given all of that, these are images that uh, show the uh, prostate here. Uh, in the uh, transverse view. So again, if we were to cut this prostate here, this would be a transverse view right here that we're looking at, again, with the urethra here surrounded by the other components. This is the anterior here, this is posterior here, this is left side, this is right side. So again, the prostate produces um, secretions, uh, it produces uh, um, 
a fluid uh, that is used uh, during our sexual uh, function and also are important to our fertility. So with that, I won't say a whole lot more about this, but I want you to know the anatomy, the prostate's hidden. If you feel down to your pubic bone, it's just below your pubic bone, that's where it lives. In this case, it just so happens that we can feel a very important part of the prostate when we do our digital rectal exam. I can also tell you that there are studies that suggest that you just need a, a, a PSA done and many times with the PSA is less than one, as an example, and you continue to have that number less than one, you probably never need a digital rectal exam. Uh, so in the bigger picture, you're always looking at PSA. Think about it as an equivalent to a thermometer. You wanna be sure what that PSA is doing. Much like a thermometer, if the temperature is going up, you're in trouble. The PSA, if it's progressively, progressively rising, you are in trouble. So I'm just letting you note that I want you to remember that. Again, this is 101, uh, anatomy of the prostate. So obviously I don't wanna to talk too much more about anything else. I want you to understand this further and you can go to some of my other videos and learn about MP MRI. You can also uh, look at uh, our HIFU uh, Revealed where we talk about the excellence in HIFU uh, done, or, done the Wheeler way. So with that note, I'll say uh, so long for now and uh, thank you for paying attention and uh, I hope you have health and wealth in your life. One without the other makes no sense. So we need health and wealth for success in life. So again, thank you.